Hello, good evening, everyone. How are you doing tonight? Hello, teacher. Hello, welcome. Hello, teacher. Hello. Hello, teacher. Ahorita voy camino a casa. Por ahí le escribí en el grupo de WhatsApp. Okay, thank you very much for informing. Hmm. Okay, people, we are going to start the class. Welcome, everybody. This is your class number six. So it's the first class of unit two. And we want to introduce the class officially. Allow me just to get there. And the topic for tonight, the tonight's topic is how to use the frequency adverbs, okay? How to use the frequency adverbs. So let's um, take this in consideration. Want me to share the screen with you? And let's read this, just as a manner of um, getting everything right. So here we've got, unit one was about the work-related events. Okay. ¿De qué se trataba la unidad 1? A ver, ¿alguien me puede decir de qué se trató la unidad 1? Yes, work related events. Work related events. Esto quiere decir eventos relacionados al trabajo. Work related events. A ver, ahí vimos algunas actividades. We learned some activities. Uh, the vocabulary we learned was um, verbs and complete activities. Okay, activities. This is what we were studying in the last I mean, in the unit one, we learned to talk about money. Remember, we talked about money and we used the questions, how many and how much, okay? And those are events related to the work. Why? Because the payment is part of our, our job activities, right? Because we um, receive our salary, we earn money, we work to earn money. The unit two is about ongoing activities, ongoing activities, okay? This is the main topic. Este es el nombre de la unidad dos. The name of unit two is ongoing activities. Vamos a aprender en esta unidad actividades. Bueno, ya sabemos eh, algo de vocabulario de las actividades, tanto del módulo 1 como el módulo 2 de la unidad 1. Y vamos a ubicarnos en cada cuánto hacemos esa actividad, ¿verdad? O para cuándo vamos a hacer esa actividad. Entonces, ongoing significa cosas que están pasando en nuestro trabajo, ongoing activities, cosas que están sucediendo, cosas que tenemos en progreso o cosas que tenemos en plan de hacer, ¿verdad? Cosas que ya están estipuladas que se deben hacer, ¿verdad? Con cierta frecuencia, ¿verdad? Con cierta frecuencia. So we want to learn how to express these activities. Remember, Simple present tense, affirmative, negative, and uh, questions, right? Questions. So, 
Unit two, it's about activities, right? Activities we do in our jobs and activities we do in our leisure time, okay? The first topic or this class topic is how to use the frequency adverbs, okay? How to use frequency adverbs. What is our topic tonight? How to use frequency adverbs. Again, what is the topic? How to use frequency adverbs. Yes, thank you very much. Everybody, please, as Rosa said, how to use, everybody, how to use frequency, frequency, frequency adverbs. adverbs. Frequency adverbs. Frequency. Frequency adverbs. Adverbs, correct. Adverbs are words that describe actions. Adverbs are words that words that describe actions. Mm, we can describe uh, characteristics too. We can describe another way of doing something too, another adverb. So adverb is related to actions, the way to do it, when we do it, how we do it. Um, and um, we want to see frequency adverbs today, okay? Frequency adverbs today. The objective is that we want to identify which are these adverbs of frequency. So the objective is participants will be able to identify and use adverbs of frequency. Identify and use adverbs of frequency, right? The adverbs of frequency well, actually, adverbs, we have a lot, a lot of words that are adverbs. But adverbs of frequency, maybe we're going to see um, this, um, let's say, non-specific, okay, non-specific frequency, but gradual it has a percentage of times that this activity is done or happens in our workplaces or at home on a, or anywhere, right? Anywhere. The objective is participants will be able to identify and use adverbs of frequency. Okay. What is the objective? Participants will be able to identify and use adverbs of frequency. Sure. Tell I me. Have a question. Tell me so. It say that, um, for example, activities. Uh, of my share, for example, is is no es una actividad diaria o es algo frecuente, ¿no? <laughs> Perdón que le dije en español. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not a daily it, activity, but it's a frequent activity. Okay. It is not it's a good. daily activity, mm -hmm. but a frequent activity. Actually, but they could frequent. be daily too. It could be daily too, because those are adverbs too. Weekly, monthly, um, hourly, and those with L-Y are adverbs too. But in this case, we are talking about some others. There is a list of frequency adverbs we want to study tonight, okay? They well, may okay. be our daily activities too, okay? Maybe there are activities that you can um, measure or describe the frequency uh, that you do that, even though they are daily. For example, daily could be from Tuesday to Wednesday and then 
on Friday you don't do that activity and on Saturday you don't do that activity. So it's daily because you do it just one um, time a day, right? Once a day. So yeah, it could be daily too, all right? But in our agenda for today, in our agenda for today, allow me just to get here. <clears throat> We have some uh, grammar exercises because we want to finish the um, exercises as a manner of feedback, okay, uh, with the negative sentences and also with the uh, money talking, okay, money uh, topic. Let me just to show you the agenda because this is our requirement. I have to show you the events in this class, all right? The class objective presentation has already passed and our feedback will be some grammar exercises. Uh, we will practice a conversation. We want to identify how often do you and how often does she. Those are the uh, structures, the grammar structures we will be using. Remember, these are questions and we will see how to answer these questions. In the breakout rooms, we have some activities too, but mostly to practice the conversation. And the session one-on-one -on -one for today is for the number six in our list. Let's start with this grammar exercise, okay? With this grammar exercise. So everybody, let's go to do this. And let's transform, let's transform these sentences into negative, okay? into negative. If we have two sentences, it's a statement, right? It is a statement, but we want to transform everything in negative, all right? So, number one, number one. Mm -hmm. Vamos a hacer un ejemplo. I don't look for a job because I don't need to earn money. Okay, let's transform number two into negative. Number two. Mm -hmm. The subject is Carlos, yes. Don't have a dozen. Doesn't, uh huh, yes. doesn't. Esta que vemos acá es la tercera persona de cual verbo. Have. Have. Entonces, aquí estamos haciendo la tercera persona en negativo, entonces tiene que have. ir en la forma base, ¿verdad? Carlos doesn't have. Days have. Yes. There you are. Waiting for his vocation. Yes. Number three. Rose doesn't work five days a week. Good. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work five work. days a week. a week. Okay. Let's continue with number four. Four. Company don't pay payers salaries and benefits. Don't pay payer salaries and benefits. Okay, remember the period, right? Number five. 
secretary doesn't secretary doesn't make this is plural doesn't why doesn't make don't mm -hmm, exactly don't. Gabriela it's don't because we this is plural it's more than one secretary we are talking about in general of secretaries okay uh-huh it's not only one secretary so if it is one secretary then here we have makes right makes but no we have secretaries uh-huh don't okay uh-huh don't make by hundred forty five dollar mm -hmm. monthly in this company very good there you are number six uh -huh. Sales. Sales representatives mm -hmm. don't call clients on Sundays to get an extra bonus. Right, number seven. In this job, you don't have social secretary and to send this one teacher. I'm sorry, vacation. vacation. Uh, what was the question, Saul? I, I don't know. Is is the read the sentence? I um, two sentence. For example, in this job, you have social secretary. In this end, a vacation. Well, creo que es la misma. Pensé que eran dos oraciones. No, it's Pero the es same. It's like... only one, and we have a subject, yes, a yes, verb, yes. and a complement. Yes. Okay, okay. number eight. The con accountants and auditors. Uh, accountant and is is plural teacher or, or plural? Is, yes. If they were we no? or no they sorry they are they the accountant they mm -hmm. is don't write a report. And prepare financial documents every Monday. When we have two things in negative, we say or, okay, instead of and, all right? Because we are talking about two things that we are uh, discarding, okay? We are discarding these two activities. For example, it says, uh, don't write a report, okay, or prepare. All right, because it's negative, it changes. Financial documents every Monday. Bye. Acá fijémonos también que en los días, todos los días de semana, uh, take capital initial, capital initial, con mayúscula siempre, ¿verdad? Los días de semana. All right, number nine. Gasoline doesn't burst. Three dollar six per gallon today. All 
All right. Thank you very much. So let's read. Let's read these sentences. Okay. We're going to read. I will say two names and you will uh, say affirmative, the first person I mentioned, and the second person I mentioned, it's going to transform it in to negative. Okay. So let's start. Fernando and Stephanie, number one. Fernando affirmative, Stephanie negative. Well, Fernando teacher. Oh, okay. Fernando Noel, it's okay. Para que pregunte, teacher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, the number one. Yes, please. I look for a job because I need to earn money. I don't look for a job because I don't need to earn money. I'm sorry, it's here, it's earn. Like this, earn. Mm -hmm. Earn. Mm -hmm. Okay, number two. Number two, please, Rosa and Ronaldo. Carlos has um, 15 days on his vacation. I don't know if Fernando was... Ah, he's driving, if I don't remember wrong. No, there you are. There you are, Ronaldo. Negative. I'm sorry. Uh, Carlos does not... Uh -huh, okay, okay. Carlos does not have uh, 15 days on his, on his back. Vacation or vacations? No, vacations. Thank oh, you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you. Uh -huh. Car okay. Carlos, Carlos does not hey, uh, 15 days on his vacation. Okay. Este verbo no es have. Este verbo es have. Así. Have. Have. Mm -hmm. Así ah. que, yes. The pronunciation is have. So, does not, Carlos no. doesn't. Carlos doesn't have. A ver otra vez, Charlotte Fernando. Doesn't have. 50 mm -hmm. days on his vacations. 15 days. 15. Okay, number three will be for uh, Saul and Alma. Alma, are you there? Okay, teacher, I read affirmative. Yes, please. Rose works five days a week. Okay, then Gabriela. Miss Gabriela? See, sí, see. Sí. Please, number three, negative. Rose, no. Yes, yes. Rose. Rose doesn't work by by day a week thank you now uh let's look um samuel and marta alicia Thank you for your picture. Yes, please, Marta Alicia. Mm -hmm. Number four. Number four. Eh, me ayuda con lo primero. Yes, Así sure. No. It's private sector. Private sector. Okay. Private sector. Companies pay. Pay fair. salaries. Pay. Mm -hmm. pay, pay fair pay. salaries. And benefits. Okay. Ahora dígalo completo así fluido. Private sector companies pay for salaries and benefits. Vamos a ver. Private sector companies pay for salaries and benefits. Great. Very good, Marta Alicia. Now, uh, allow me just to see who else is over there. Maria Isabel, please. Uh, number four, negative.
Isabel? Sorry, sorry. Okay. No, no. Sí. Fiber sector company does pay, pay for salary and benefits. Ok, vale, lo vamos a leer un poquito más fluido, con mucha seguridad, Isabel. Aquí eh, vamos con toda la seguridad, ¿verdad? Private sector companies don't pay fair salaries and benefits. Ok, go ahead, please, Isabel. Um, private sector company does pay fair salary and benefits. Yes, very good. Very good job. Thank you, Isabel. Now, let's listen to Helen Hernandez. Are you there? And I don't know if Deborah is over there. Deborah, are you there? Do you want to read number five? Number five. Yes, please. And then Helen negative. Uh, okay. Try, please, try, try. Inténtelo, inténtelo, vamos. Yes, great. Ajá, uh -huh, continue. Very good. Very good job, Deborah. And it is correct. Helen, can you read, please, the affirmative number five? Yes, please. Uh, secretaries may fifty hundred forty-five monthly in this company. Okay, let's try saying the amount again. Five hundred forty-five. Five hundred forty-five dollars. dollars. Exactly. But ahora Helen lo va a decir completo, okay? Vamos. Secretaries may $545 monthly in this company. Great job. Yes, that's correct. Okay, let's listen to Rosa again. And let's ask Stephanie again. Please, number six. Sales representatives call clients on Saturday to get an extra bonus. Actually, it's on Sundays, not Saturdays. <laughs> All right. Sage, a representative don't call, call clients on Sunday to get an extra bonus. That's good. Reps is short for representative, oh, okay. and we can say reps. Yeah, sales okay. reps, and it sounds good. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Now, number seven, number seven, let's look at, let's listen to, let me just to see here. Ronaldo, are you there? Ronaldo, please read number seven, affirmative, and Saul, negative. Okay, uh, number seven. Yes, please. Okay, uh, in this job, you have Social Security in pay vacation. Good. The negative is in this job, you don't have Social Security and pay vacation. All right. Just remember that the, the pronunciation is have. Pronunciation have. is have, mm -hmm. not have. It's have. Have. Mm -hmm. have. Thanks, teacher. Have. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You did a good job. Now, who wants to do number eight? Marta Alicia, please, number eight, affirmative, and Helen, negative. Yes, number eight, please. Mm -hmm. 
Very good, very good. This word, auditors, uh, we say like oh, auditors, auditors, okay? Auditors. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. But you did a good job. Number eight, Helen, negative. And auditors don't write a report for preparing financial documents every Monday. Okay, this verb is prepare. 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 Yes, prepare. Very good job. Very good job. So, number nine. Who wants to do number nine, guys? Number nine, Fernando Noel. Yes, I know. Fernando Noel and Stephanie again. All right. <clears throat> um, is is a uh, gasoline 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 Ga gasoline gasoline cost a uh, three dollar fifty six cents per gallon today eighty six not fifty eighty six I see 80. Yes. Okay. Do you want to repeat it again? Uh, ga gasoline cost $3.86 per gallon today. Very good. Very good. Stephanie, please. Gasoline does, doesn't cost $3.86 per gallon today. That's correct. Thank you very much, guys. I will call the roll. So please, everybody, remember the requirement from INSA Forb is that you have to turn your camera on. And when I call your name, you say present. Alma Yamilet Hernandez de Vasquez. Carlos Edgardo Vasquez Espino. Carlos Ernesto Galán Serrano. Okay, Carlos Edgardo, thank you. Débora Yamilet Campos Cortés. Fernando Enrique Martínez Masí. Oh, my goodness. Be careful, Débora. Watch out. Fernando Enrique Martínez Masí. Okay, Deborah. All right. Have a safe walking. All right. Fernando Enrique Martinez Masin. Fernando Noel Mauricio Cintigo. Present teacher. Okay. Gabriela Lisette Hernandez Cruz. Present teacher. Helen Saray Hernandez Larín. Present teacher. There you are. Eh, Jose Adonai Mendoza Aguillón. Jose Antonio Campos Rivas. Juan Carlos Gavidia Alfaro. María Isabel Rivas Guevara. Marta Alicia Rivera Sosa. Ok. Ronaldo Josué Guerrero Hernández. Present teacher. Rosa Estela Polanco García. Present teacher. Samuel Eduardo Araniva Galvez. Saúl. Teacher. Yeah, thank Samuel. you. Okay, thank you very much, Rosa. Yes, I now I remember. I'm sorry. All right, thank you, Rosa. Thank you, uh, Samuel, and don't worry. Just okay. Uh, Saúl Álvarez Pacheco. Present teacher. Okay. Stephanie Magalia Amaya Reyes. Present teacher. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Saul. Thank you, Stephanie. Verónica Beatriz Celso de Saldaña. All right. Number six is Fernando Noel Mauricio Cintigo. So the session one on one for today is yours, Fernando, if you want to stay, okay? 
Okay, teacher. Okay. Then, guys, I know that you have access to the platform, right? So, let's go to the platform and let's start by um, checking homework, all right? Let's check homework. Um, on the platform, uh, let, let's go back to section one, all right? We're going to, uh, to check section one. Okay, section one is what related events and let's look at the first homework. We'll share the screen in a basic form. Here we are. All right, let's start by the first one. The first one was under the topic simple present statements. Simple present statements. Remember, the form of the verb is the first in the column of any um, list of verbs, right? So it says the instructions, multiple choice. Select the correct form of the verb. In the simple present, we don't use any ing form, right? And we use letter S for the third person. So, number one, uh, which one is the correct answer? I, mm -hmm, in the morning. I take a shower in the morning. That's correct. Number two? My boss sends email every day. Sends email every day. Correct. Number three. Have meetings on Friday. My okay. coworkers makes meetings. Have. Exactly. Have. Yeah, because it's plural. Remember, plural. My coworkers have not hate have okay. yes number four the secretary usually right. arrives late to work late to work. all right arrives number five we, we never work work on one day Work, work right because this is plural work. so we never work on weekends work. let's send and yes 20 of 20 that that's great number two uh it's under the topic time expressions for regular activities okay select the correct time expression this is a multiple choice format too number one i take a shower every minute mm -mm. Every day, well, mm -hmm. or two times a year. Do you take a shower two times a year? Every day. No, every day. <laughs> Only on Christmas Day. <laughs> My partners have a party every monthly. Uh huh. Tell me. No puedo hacer la actividad porque voy bajo la lluvia y como la 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 agua no me permite. Ok, Débora, entonces ponga atención a cómo lo vamos haciendo para que usted al llegar a su casa lo pueda realizar. Oye, y, de lo, y, y también puede, cuando ya haya pasado la clase, puede revisar el video nuevamente, ¿ok? Ok, vaya, vaya escuchando nada más. All right. Number two. My partners have a party every monthly. Every monthly? No, it is monthly. Okay, monthly. Porque no podemos eh, no, eh, no, unir, no, no, no. ¿verdad? O es every month o 
Monthly, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Cualquiera de los dos. ¿Se acuerdan en aquella última eh, pregunta que teníamos en el cuadrito? Que decía, había una pleca ahí, o una o la otra, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Pero no juntas. Uh -huh. Vamos a ver. Number three. Oh my God, right. Every day. Yeah, daily. that's it's daily. Mm -hmm. Right, daily. Mi jefe exactly. cuida el reporte diariamente. That's correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Number four. I have a meeting weekly. Weekly, weeks. Weekly. Weekly. Yes, it's once a week, right? Or every oh. week. Mm -hmm. Weekly. Number five. People at work go, go uh, to yearly. conference yearly. Yearly. Exactly. Yearly. Yearly. Mm -hmm. People oh. at work go to conferences yearly. Mm -hmm. Let's end and yes, 20 of 20. We did it, guys. You are such a great group. Oh my goodness. Now, under the topic, how to use how many and how much, let's look at uh, homework number three. Uh, the instruction says, fill in the blanks with how much or how many, but this is a multiple option, right? We have to select which one. Park. Number one, can we count um, parks? Many. How many parks are there how many in parks? your city? Correct. How many? Because parks is count a count noun. Okay, count noun. All right. Number two. How um, much time do you use it? How much? Um, how, how much many? time? No, no. How much time? Mm -hmm. Because time is non count. Mm -hmm. You cannot count time. All right. How much? Many. No, it's how much. How much? Time do you need? Mm -hmm. No, how, how much? Many? Many. Eh, Ronaldo, usamos how many cuando, por ejemplo, fuera que dijera cuántas veces, ¿verdad? Cuántas veces, pero en este caso está en el significado de cuánto tiempo, ¿sí? Cuánto ah, okay. necesitas. Entonces ahí sí tenemos que usar how much. how much. Si fuera how many times do you check your email a day? Okay, how many times. ¿verdad? Ahí se convierte en contable como veces, ¿verdad? Okay, number three, guys. How many pollution in the summer? Okay, pollution es contaminación, ¿verdad? Pollution. How much? Mm, yes. How much? How much pollution is there in El Salvador? In El Salvador, yes. Mm -hmm. We can say, uh, I can, uh, well, allow me just to give this experience with you. I love to say my the name of my country, El Salvador, because no one, I mean, the native speakers, that they don't have the context about the letter R pronunciation in Spanish, right? They don't understand what, what country this is, okay? Mm, por solidaridad, mm, hay que decirlo como El Salvador, right? Para los native speakers. Pero el nombre de nuestro país es El Salvador. Y si usted lo dice como El Salvador, no hay ningún problema, okay? So, how much pollution is there in El Salvador? How much pollution is there in El Salvador, right? So, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Number four. How many co-workers do, co do, co do you have? Great. Number five. How many, how much money? Or how many? Cuando decimos, de, cuando hablamos de money, ¿Cuál es la que usamos? ¿Usamos much or how many? Much. much. Ajá, how, how much. much. Cuando hablamos de money and time, usamos how much. Ok, how much money how much do you money need to buy a house? 
So here we go, 20 of 20. And let's go to the number four, all right? This is just checking. Mm -hmm. And this is under the topic, simple present negative statements. Acuérdense que en los negativos lo que, lo que debemos fijarnos es el sujeto, ¿verdad? Si el sujeto es tercera persona singular, entonces vamos a usar doesn't. Pero si es tercera persona plural, ah, entonces voy a usar don't. Eso acordémonos siempre, ¿verdad? La tercera persona plural sería they. La tercera persona singular es he, she, It, y cualquier nombre que eh, se refiera a él, ella o eso, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver, number one. Mario doesn't like working on Saturday. Great. Number two. My friend don't My eat friend doesn't. sugar. Eh, es plural, mire, así es como que fuera they. Uh -huh. Entonces tenemos que poner don't. My friends don't eat lunch together. Number three. Julio and Pedro don't, don't write. Exactly, don't write. Uh -huh. Don't Sorry, write. I'm sorry? Está en mute. Oh, okay. All right. No problem. Uh, number four. My sister doesn't hate. Doesn't have. 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 Hmm? Sorry, to say have. Okay. I doesn't have, have a car. Mm -hmm. Number five. <clears throat> My father and I don't play soccer on we. Weekday. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's end. And 20 of 20. Yes, we are almost to 100, guys. Uh, let's look at the form number five. One second here. So this is under the topic simple present review and practice. Let's go and do it together. Instructions multiple choice. Select the correct word that fits, right? My mother always, mm -hmm, for me, cook, cookies, or cooks. Esta es la tercera persona, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. De el tiempo presente, conjugando el verbo. My mother sería she. Cooks for me. Exactly. Cooks without letter E, right? Just letter S. Cooks. Number two. My friend Jesus. Don't drink chocolate. No, no, My sorry, friend no. Irene. She. Mm -hmm. This doesn't drink chocolate. All right. Good. Number three. How much do or does? In how much do you want? Do, exactly, because the subject is you. Uh, mm -hmm. You. Number I four. Like going out Friday. I like. Correct. Like. like. Mm -hmm. Después de este verbo, like. Usamos un verbo con ing. También podemos uh -huh. utilizar un infinitivo como to go. Pero en general podríamos decir que después del verbo like o del verbo love también, like, sería un verbo en forma de ing. Y aquí no uh -huh. quiere decir que dice yendo. No, aquí dice ir. Pero tenemos que poner uh -huh. ing por este verbo like. Eso recordémoslo así, ¿ok? Number five. My sister friends doesn't eat meat. Ok, veamos cuál es el sujeto acá. ¿Cuál es el sujeto? She, sister. ¿Es sister o es friends? 
my sister's friends. Ah, ajá. Uh -huh. Amigos de mi hermana. Amigos. Yeah. Amigos de quién? Friends. It's they. Exactly. My sister's friends. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. Don't or doesn't, en este caso. Si es plural. ¿Qué ponemos? Don't. Exactly. Don't. All right, let's send uh -huh. and we have 20 of 20. Yes, guys, such a great group. Oh my goodness. Mm. I like this group, guys. You are such smart class. Great. Okay, now we finish till homework number five. All right. Vamos a comenzar entonces con nuestro tema, with our topic. The topic tonight, remember, is frequency adverbs okay frequency adverbs empecemos por un poco de vocabulario see ¿sí? some vocabulary and let's talk about the activities we do in our free time all right things activities actions that we like doing in our free time those are called leisure activities Okay, leisure activities. Let's learn some vocabulary about, about the leisure activities. Leisure activities. Leisure activities. Uh -huh. According to the pictures, what activities do you see? There are six activities here. Okay. There are six activities. What activity do you see on picture number one? Here, learning the book. Learning or read? Read. Uh huh. Read. Aha, uh -huh. yes, good. But that's good, Rosa. I like read. that. You read the book. Read. Uh -huh. Yes, no problem. Go ahead. Aha. Uh -huh. Vamos a poner entonces por acá, quizás en blanco, ¿verdad? read the book. Right? Read a book. Read a book. Number two, activity number two. Okay. Uh -huh. eh, solamente la actividad. La actividad se compone del verbo y el complemento, ¿verdad? En este caso aquí tenemos read a book. Y aquí, por ejemplo, sería... Mm, podríamos exactly go to the park ok uh -huh. pero vemos que andan en bicicleta verdad they are riding bicycles entonces podemos poner también ride a bicycle all right yes ride a bicycle y yeah, la forma corta para decir bicycle es bike así ride a bike Mm -hmm. uh, number three, what activity do you think you can do in that place? Go to the shopping. Yes, go <laughs> shopping. Great. Uh huh. So, go shopping. Okay, go shopping. What about number four? What activity this is? What is this? Okay. Shopping. Exactly. Play soccer. soccer. Mm -hmm. Oops, 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 oops. No se mira mucho, ¿verdad? Ok. 
Okay. Number five. Number five. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes, pero la actividad en realidad. Sure. 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 Go surfing. Sure. Okay, así sure. como go shopping, este sería go surfing. Go surfing. Mm -hmm. Go surfing. Mm -hmm. And number six. Go to the beach. Great. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. That's great. Go to the beach. There you are. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you a question, guys. I will ask you a question. What do you like doing in your free time? What do you like doing in your free time? Lo voy a escribir en el chat, ok? La pregunta. Cuando me hacen esa pregunta, me están eh, pidiendo información de cuál es la actividad que me gusta hacer como una leisure activity, como una actividad de tiempo libre, ¿verdad? En tiempo libre también existen hobbies, también existen likes and dislikes, ¿verdad? Eh, pero siempre tendemos a realizar una actividad más que otras, ¿verdad? Entonces, por ejemplo, ahorita tenemos acá de ejemplo, read a book. Go to the park, ride a bike, go surfing, go to the beach, play soccer, go shopping. Okay? So, what do you like doing in your free time? And let's use this vocabulary. Okay? What do you like doing in your free time? Okay, ¿ya tomaron nota de estas actividades? Yeah. See? All right, thank you. Uh, if you want to uh, take a screenshot, please do it right now because I'm going to move to another, right? Ajá. Solo quiero que notemos algo. Miren la forma del verbo que tenemos acá. Read, ¿verdad? Este es tiempo presente simple. Yeah? The simple present tense. Pero como me están preguntando, like, este verbo tiene que sufrir una modificación. Entonces, vamos a ir a ver eso, ¿sí? At ING. Exactly. Entonces, yo les pregunto, what do you like to win in your free time? Si usamos el vocabulario que teníamos antes, ok, si usamos ese vocabulario que teníamos antes, podemos decir así, ¿verdad? Como a manera de ejemplo, ¿cómo respondemos esta pregunta? How to answer this question. What do you like doing in your free time? I like reading. Uh, ay, se me quedó en blanco esto, ¿verdad? Ok. Ya sé, mejor vamos a usar de Excel para no estar con este problema. No, the PowerPoint is better. Mm -mm. Let me just one sec. Is it done? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put the text on. ¿Cómo responderíamos esto? Le vamos a poner algo grande aquí. I don't need para qué. Lo veamos un poquito más. Obviamente me preguntan a mí, ¿verdad? What do you like doing in your free time? Entonces, mi respuesta tiene que ser I. Uy. Y también ahí la tengo en blanco, ¿no? Hey, oh my goodness. I'm kind of crazy here. Uh -huh. Oh, sí, porque estaba haciendo los cuadros aquellos. Ok. I like reading a book. Ok. 
I like reading a book. Me gusta leer un libro. All right. I like reading a book. Uh -huh. Ahora, yo les puedo preguntar. La siguiente pregunta después de esta uh -huh, sería una pregunta muy interesante con la frase How often? All right. How often? Uh -huh. How often? Lo voy a poner por acá. Vale. Puedo hacer las dos preguntas. ¿Ok? Puedo preguntar esto. How often do you have time off? ¿Ok? How often do you have time off? Ha time off es un tiempo de descanso o fuera de su trabajo, ¿verdad? Time off es como su tiempo de que usted no está en el trabajo. ¿Sí? How often do you have time off? Uh -huh. ¿Cómo puedo responder esta pregunta? How can I answer this question? Uh, for example, how often uh, I practice yoga? Oh, that's a very good question. And it is... Ay, perdón, perdón. Yo no sé por qué esto se me ha quedado clavado en el blanco. How? How often? Ah, okay, do, do like. Do you, do you like? Do like? No, porque usted me dijo practice, ¿verdad? Do you sí. practice yoga? Uh -huh. Ok. También puedo preguntar con la que teníamos allá, how often do you read a book? Sí, con la que teníamos. Y es correcto. Gramaticalmente estaba correcto como usted me lo dijo, Ronald, ¿ok? Entonces, tenemos, ¿puedo preguntar de la actividad o puedo de, preguntar eh, cada, con qué frecuencia usted tiene tiempo libre? ¿Ok? How often do you have time off? Uh -huh. ¿Cada cuánto usted tiene eh, tiempo libre en su trabajo? Ajá. Uh -huh. um... Cuando es solo la hora de almuerzo, sería only time lunch. Ok. I okay. have I, I have lunch time uh -huh. uh, every day, right? Oh, podríamos decir I have lunch time as my time of daily. Ok. Uh, puedo decir I have time of every weekend, right? Como me decía ahorita también Saúl, ¿verdad? I have time of every weekend. Mm -hmm. Ok. Sí, solo que yo tengo una duda allí. Tell okay. me. Cuando usted preguntaba how often do you have time off, mm -hmm. o sea, yo traté de responderle porque creo que la pregunta es eh, ¿cada cuánto tienes un tiempo de descanso, verdad? Exacto. Entonces, yo traté de responderle, por ejemplo, con la misma pregunta, la misma respuesta. O sea, eh, how often, en realidad, ¿qué significa? ¿Con qué frecuencia? Ah, ¿con qué frecuencia? O sea, eh, creo que, no sé si me voy a dar un poco a entender. Cuando usted me pregunta, ¿con qué frecuencia yo tengo tiempo libre? Y uno quiere responder de la misma manera, uh -huh. eh, con frecuencia eh, yo hago deporte. O con frecuencia, yo no almuerzo. Entonces, ¿cómo sería si una persona quiere responder de la misma manera que le preguntaron? Great, Ronaldo. That's a very good question. Y eso, de eso se trata toda la clase de este día, ¿ok? En este día vamos a aprender los adverbs of frequency. Los adverbios de frecuencia, que son palabras para responder a este how often. Vamos de lo general a lo específico ahorita, ¿ok? Y qué bueno que hace la pregunta. Porque realmente existe una lista de palabras que vamos a usar para responder esta pregunta, ¿sí? Y las vamos a ver poco a poco. Ahorita, hasta este momento, las palabras que ya conocimos, acuérdense que son daily, monthly, every day, in the evening, in the week, on the weekend y así sucesivamente, ¿verdad? Ya aprendimos time expressions, ¿sí? 
Cuando me ah, okay. preguntan, how often, yo puedo usar cualquier time expression according the time that I do that activity, okay? Uh, this is why I added daily, okay? How often do you have time off? Mm -hmm. Every week or weekly, right? Uh, por ejemplo, en este caso, every weekend, right? Every weekend I have time off. Right? Every weekend. And uh, decíamos otra, otra expresión de tiempo. Imagínense que no es su día libre el, el fin de semana. Precis pues, puede usted precisar qué día es su día libre. Puede ser que usted trabaje los Saturdays and Sundays. Entonces, usted puede decir, I have, oops, I have time of, uh -huh, every Sunday and Wednesday. Okay, when stay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Wednesday. Sí, y esta es frecuencia también. Okay, esta es frecuencia. El tiempo en que yo lo hago, time expression. Hasta este momento no conocemos los adverbs of frequency, que es a lo que vamos ahorita, ¿sí? Y gracias por preguntar, Ronaldo. Las palabras que nosotros usamos, ¿ok? Como adverbs of frequency, we have this list. Always, usually, normally, often, sometimes. Occasionally, seldom, hardly ever, rarely, never. Yes, these are adverbs. What is an adverb? An adverb is a word that change or modifies or qualifies the meaning of a sentence by telling us how often or how frequently something happens, okay? How frequently something happens. Mm -hmm. So let's go and read this uh, conversation, all right? It says, this conversation is between John and Anne. So let's look at how this works, how often, And then we see a time expression after that, okay? Uh, how often and a frequency adverb after that in the answer, okay? So this is the way, Ronaldo, to answer the question how often, okay? So let's look at how Joan and Anne are talking. And they are talking about frequent, frequent activities in their job right? How often do you check your email? Every two hours. And you? Well, I try to check it as often as I can. And how often do you call your clients? I often call them once a week on Monday, but I usually call them on Friday to check their order. Do you call clients? Yes, I always call them first thing in the morning. I believe it is important to have contact with them all the time. You are right. Okay. Vamos a hacer siempre la práctica, ¿ok? Ponemos todos en silencio nuestro micrófono, pero quiero ver moviendo esos labios, ¿sí? Vamos a ver. How often do you check your email? Every two hours. And you? Well, I try to check it as often as I can. And how often do you call your clients? I often call them once a week on Monday. But I usually call them on Friday to check their order. Do you call clients? Yes, I always call them first thing in the morning. I believe it is important to have contact with them all the time. You are right. 
Okay? Is there any questions so far about the vocabulary in this conversation? Not sure. No? Okay, so no let's sure. repeat the words we have in bold. All right? The words in bold. How often, everybody? How often? How often? How often. often. Ajá. En este caso, okay. en el inglés americano, no decimos la letra T. En inglés británico, sí van a escuchar que dicen how often. All right. Pero okay. la pronunciación de nuestro lado del de, de, de este continente americano, ¿verdad? Entonces, vamos a usar how often. How often. Solo con la F. How often. How often. How often. How often. A ver, tenemos usually, 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 always, 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 how often, how often, usually, always, always, all right, so let's look at how this work, always is the, the, 100% of the times, no time missing, okay? No falta ni una sola vez. Always is always, right? Always. Mm -hmm. We can say always but once. Mm -mm. No, that's usually, all right? Always is always, all right? 100% of the times. Tell me, Deborah. Uh, teacher, uh, how do you say? Uh, usually, is usually, or you? Usually, usually. You, usually. Yes. Mm -hmm. Es como decir you. Exactly, usually. Usually. Okay, thank you, teacher. Correct. All right. The 90% of the times happens this activity. All right, then, we're going to use usually. Maybe once missing of always, right? Uh, two times missing or twice missing of always. All right, then it, com it becomes usually. Let's read. Always. I always get up at five o'clock, right? I always get up at five o'clock. Always is always. Even in your time off, right? <laughs> in your days off. Mm -hmm. You get up at five o'clock. Mm -hmm. The 90% of the of the times, usually. He usually drives to work. He usually drives to work. He's got a car, and maybe when the car breaks, all right then, or breaks, um, I'm sorry. When the car breaks, uh -huh, he maybe takes a bus, right? So he usually drives to work. He usually drives to work. The 80% of the times, normally, normally, she normally checks her email. 70% hmm. of the times, often, often, all right? I often have breakfast at work. I often have breakfast at work. Not always, right? Mm, it's not a habit that you do it. Mm, you often have breakfast at work. Sometimes. So every other time, right? Sometimes, every other time. It means from time to time, right? She sometimes uses the microwave, occasionally. Mm -hmm. It's just eventually, right? Occasionally, I occasionally work over time. I occasionally work over time. Seldom, Seldom, it, this is the 10% of the times. For example, we seldom take calls at work. We seldom take calls at work. It means that you don't use the phone in your job, right? And maybe if it is a personal call, okay, you seldom take calls at work. What about, uh, uh, what about hardly ever? Hardly ever is very close to never, okay, very close, but mm, there's once that it happens, right, maybe mm, it's mm, 
not probable. Okay, it's not probable that that activity is going to happen. So it's only the 5% of the times. Uh, he rarely has conferences. Okay, he rarely has conferences. Mm -hmm. I could say also, uh, he hardly ever, he hardly ever has conferences. Never, okay, no time happens never and ever right uh no time so i never get late to work do you uh how often do you get late to work how often do you get late to work i never never teacher right uh -huh. because if you usually get late to work you are going to be fired okay there will be uh, they, they will fire you all right people uh-huh tell me uh, what do you say in Spanish? Seldom. Seldom es como casi nunca. Yeah, como eh, raras veces, pero no es rarely. Okay, seldom es como escasamente. Yeah, mm -hmm. como escaso. Y what is the difference between seldom and rarely? Raramente. Mm -hmm. Eh, eh, perdón, eh, the difference, difference between seldom and rarely. Well, seldom is more probable than rarely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Seldom is more probable than rarely. Mm -hmm. Okay, people. So, for example, in our workplaces, we can use these uh, questions, right? How often do you check your email? Every two hours. And you? Okay. Let's listen to Rosa, Stella, and Saul, please. Rosa will be Anne, and Saul is John. Okay, teacher. Mm -hmm. I start. How often do you check your email? Every two hours. And you? Well, I try to check it as often as I can. And how often do you call your clients? I often call the, them once a week on Monday, but I usually call them on a Friday to check their order, orders. Do you call clients? Yes, I always call them first time in the morning. I believe it is important to have contact with them all the time. You are right. Great. So first thing, first, first thing. First thing. Mm -hmm. Thanks, teacher. Thing, first not thing. think. Thing. First, first thing. Yes, with the letter N. Okay, people, Thank let's you. go to the breakout rooms and practice this conversation. Uh, after you practice the conversation, we have a uh, pair work on page number 19. Page number 19. How often does Anne check her email? That's the, the question. And the second question is, why is it important to check the email? All right, so you are going to discuss these two questions. All right, you will discuss these questions. Allow me just to get this right. Mm -hmm. So you will practice the conversation and answer discussing, right? Discussing. Get moved. Okay. This is what we are going to practice and do. All right. Practice the conversation and answer these two questions. But you have to discuss, okay? Discuss, discutir, discuss.
Ok, tengo a Samuel Araniva, él va a ir al, al breakout room, pero no va a poder participar, ok. Así que con quien toque Samuel, él va a estar escuchando ahí, pero no va a estar hablando, ok. Eh, vamos a ver, tenemos en el... A ver, tengo a Ronaldo, a Ronaldo lo voy a poner con Helen, ok. Helen con Ronaldo, Ahí van okay. a haber dos personas como oyentes también, ¿ok? Así que solicito okay. a todos los que están como oyentes que se conecten al grupo, por favor, aunque no participen hablando, pero están escuchando la actividad, ¿ok? Vamos a ver, tengo el otro grupo, si se me genera un poquito de... Ok. Bien. Fernando con Saúl, Gabriela con Stephanie. Eh, por ahí les va a aparecer personas que no, no pueden hablar en este momento, pero tengámosle la consideración, ¿ok? Bien. Ready. Let's join your rooms. Perdí la, conexión, perdí la conexión y me sacó del breaker room. Ok, just one second, Fernando. I will see what was you. You go to room six, all right. Room six. There you are. Thank you, teacher. No problem. Isabel. Es que lo estaba diciendo bien, pero bueno. How often do you check your email? Every two hours. And you? Well, I try to shake it as of often as I can. And how often do you call your clients? I often call them once a week on Monday, but I usually call them on Friday to check their orders. Do you call clients? Te escucho. Este practicar la conversación, me dijiste. Sí, y resolver las, las, las preguntas que tiene abajo. Sí. Okay. No sé si tú tienes la. la, la compartir la pantalla no puedo. No, yo digo para. Porque igual yo también voy de camino, entonces no podría hacerlo. Pero si la tienes, empezamos ya. Aunque okay. sí, la teacher lo mandó en, en WhatsApp. Ahí la estoy viendo y estoy tomando nota de las preguntas para luego resolverlas. Ok. Si quieres, empiezo yo. Ok. Eh. How often do you check your email? Ever, ever two hours and you. Well, I try to check it as often as I can. And I 
I often I often call the ones a week on Monday, but I usually call them on Friday to check their order. Do you call do you call clients? Yes, I always call them first time in the morning. I believe it is it is important to have contact with them all the time. Okay, yeah, I believe it is important to have contact with creo que ahí es then all the time. Okay. Bye. Si gusta, repasemos la, la segunda de John, porque la segunda de John a mí me costó y veo que también a usted le costó. La que dice, well, I try to check is, no, it as, es que, es que ahí es donde me cuesta. Ok. I try to check it as often as I can. Ahora viene el otro que me costó. In how often do you call your clients? Hágale usted ahora, repita. Well, I try to check it as often as I can. And all, how often do you call your clients? Creo que le costó la segunda línea también, ¿verdad? Sí. Vale, si gusta, otra vez, permítame. Veamos. Para mí la segunda línea es In how often do you call your clients? Sí, um, how in? often do you call no, in? your clients? Uh -huh. In how often do you call your clients? In how often do you call your clients? Vaya, ¿qué otra línea le pasamos? ¿Qué siente usted que le cuesta? La siguiente está larga. ¿La siguiente? La de I often call 10 once a week on Monday. Ah, hasta ahí, a mí, yo no le veo dificultad. Después, ahí es donde viene la dificultad. But I usually... Ajá. But I usually call 10 on Friday to check the order. Ok, voy yo ahora. But I usually... Call 10 on Friday to check their order. Okay, les voy a dar un tip, okay? I will give you just uh, some tips. Look, when we pronounce the words one word by one word, it's more difficult. So let's try to join the words, okay? Link the words. Vamos uniendo las palabras para que no nos cueste. Entonces, okay. por ejemplo, en esa que me dice eh, que John está hablando en la segunda de John, ¿verdad? Dice, okay. well, I try to check it. De un solo, check it. Uh, ¿Mm? Check it. Yeah, I try to check it as often as I can. As often as, as often as I can. Vamos a ver. Okay. Well. I try to check it as often as I can. Uniendo palabra con palabra. Vamos a ver. I try to check it as often as I can. As I can, ¿verdad? I as can. I can. Uh -huh. Ahora, sin despegar. Hagamos ese ejercicio ahorita. Sin despegar las palabras. Vamos a decirlas una tras otra en un solo aire, ¿sí? Vamos a decir... I try to check it as often as I can. Vamos. I try to check it as often as I can. As I can. As I, I can. can. Sorry, sorry, mm -hmm. sorry, I can. As I can. I try to check it as often is as I can. Ajá, pero ya ve que ya lo va soltando más. Ahora, veamos en la siguiente línea. Dice and, ahí no dice in, ahí dice and. How often do you call? La, la palabra call, aquí, C-A-L-L-C-A-L-L, -L -L, se pronuncia call, como que fuera una O, no como una A. Para nosotros viene call. siendo una O, ¿verdad? Call your clients, call your clients. ¿Ok? In often. And, and. 
Mm -hmm. And often do you call your client? Vale, otra vez. And how often do you call your clients? And how often do you call your client? Ajá. Solo que ese verbo eh, llamar a los clientes es call, no es call. Es call. Call. Mm -hmm. call. Okay. Yes. Y la otra que estaban repitiendo, ¿cuál era? A ver, se me fue. Uh, era... I believe, ¿verdad? Ay, no, era la segunda de an y la que comienza con how often call the once a week o Monday. Ah, ok. Vale, acordémonos. ¿Cómo se pronuncia ese verbo? Call. No cal, sino que call. Entonces, okay. sería así. But I usually call them. Call them. Acuérdense que vamos uniendo palabra con palabra, ¿verdad? Entonces, but I usually call them. On Friday to check their order. I usually call them on Friday to check their order. Vamos a ver ustedes. Ok, segunda compañera. Démosle juntos. Together. Okay. I usually. I usually. Call them on Friday to check their order. Call them on Friday to check their order. Good. Yes, Ronaldo. Vamos a okay. ver. Eh, Helen es, ¿verdad? Helen sí. estaba por acá. Ok. Helen, vamos a ver usted. I usually call. I usually. A ver, te leo. On Friday to check. Ok. Ahí está. Very good, Helen. Now you, Alma. Eh, donde dice I often. Mm, estamos en la segunda de Anne y estamos aprendiendo a unir palabra con palabra. Entonces vamos por mm -hmm. I usually call them on Friday to check their order. Ah, desde ahí de I usually. Ajá, porque es la que ellos tenían, que estaban practicando. Uh -huh. No, a ver. I usually call them on Friday to check the order. Very ¿Sí? good, yes. Bueno, continúen ustedes. Continue, people. And I will go to check another group, all right? You're doing sí. a very good job. Good night, okay. Oh. okay, continue, guys, continue. Okay. Ajá. Este, tú usa, um, empiezo yo nuevamente. How often do you... Es que eso no, es que eso no me sale. Uh -huh. es, bueno, yo sí lo pronuncio. One a week. Y si está la teacher acá, que nos corrija. Teacher... Can you help me, please? Here I am. Uh -huh. I, What's I the discuss, problem? <laughs> I discuse. Uh -huh. But um, Fernando, what mm -hmm. is the pronunciation in one a week? Is correctly? For example, paragraph number four. I often call them one a week on Monday. Is correctly? Uh, no. Uh, remember that you have to pronounce the, the S sound. Uh huh. It says once, if I'm not wrong. Uh, once. Once. Mm -hmm. once a week. Once a week. Once a week. Yeah, and says, I often call them once a week. Once. Oh, once a week. Once. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Siempre okay. es el sonido este, the sound of letter S. Well, in this case, it's just that it sounds like an S, right? Okay, teacher. Okay, okay teacher. Fernando, practice. How Demo. often do you check your email? Every two hours. And you? Well, I try to check it as often as I can. And how often do you call your clients? I often come then once a week on Monday, but I usually call them on Friday to check their order. Do you call clients? Yes, I always call them first thing in the morning. I believe it is important to have contact with them all the time. You are right. Very good Thanks. job, guys. <laughs> Just look at when we speak, we link the words. We link the words. So check it. Check it as often check as it. I can, right? Check it as often as I can. Linking the words. Uniendo palabras. Okay, oh, palabra check. con palabra. Um, you remember how does it say? It says, I check it, right? 
Uh, uh, um, uh -huh. Well, I try to. Ch yes. Uh huh. Okay. Say it again, che Fernando. Eh, um, el párrafo tres. Yes, the the third paragraph. Yes. Okay. The well, I try to check it as often as I can. And Very good. Mm -hmm. But you have uh, to link the words. Link the words. I try to check it as often as I can. As often as I can. Check it as often as I can. Right? Check it as, as, check it as often as I can. Check it as. Check it. Check it. Check it. Mm -hmm. Check it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I try to check it as, as often as I can. Great. Yes. That's yeah, correct. I know. But if you have this in mind that you have to link the words, then it's going to be easier. Okay. It's going to become easier to pronounce. All right. Okay, teacher. Okay, teacher. teacher, the the pace of work, the number three. Mm -hmm. I discussed to the Fernando and in and, and the answer, the question one is how often does and check her email mm -hmm. is usually a, a, always for is is always mm -hmm. always and I check her email okay just let me remember <laughs> okay uh, well mm -mm -mm -mm. but it's check every two hours yes she daily Yes, she checks her email every two hours. Okay, every okay. two hours. Mm -hmm. Every two hours. Okay. It's not always. She... It's every two hours. Okay, every two hours. Mm, habíamos, perdón, que en español, teacher. Eh, habíamos tomado el always porque como siempre lo chequea, digamos mm -hmm. como la razón, verdad. El, mm -hmm. Pero en este caso, como ya está especificado que es cada dos horas, ¿verdad? Entonces, mm -hmm. utilizar mejor every two hours. Yes, because it's more specific. Yeah, always okay. is non-specific. Yeah, it's oh, in okay. general. It's more specific. Mm -hmm. Okay, teacher. Exactly. Okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And the answer number two, mm -hmm. it is important to have contact with them all the time. With them? The communication. Who is with them? them. Who are them? Mm, them. Uh huh. It's with them. With them. Uh, with. Mm -hmm. It's with. With them. With. Uh huh. But my with. question, my question is, uh, who do you refer when you say them? Communication. Uh huh. Uh huh. But but them. The clients, right? Oh, the <laughs> right. Yes. Uh -huh. yes, so yes. okay, let's go to the main room, guys. I think it's uh, yeah. I think you have the answers and you have the ideas. Let's go to the main room. All right. Okay, teacher. Thanks, okay, teacher. teacher. Okay. Okay, then let's start with uh, the activity. The activity was to discuss those two questions. Number one was about Anne, right? Uh, how often does Anne check her email? What is the answer, Rosa? 
Okay, she checks her emails every two hour, hours. Every two hours, hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me just share that. Okay, she she checks her email every two hours. Hmm. Every two hours, and she and if she stays, I mean, if she works eight hours a day, so she does it four times, right? Four times. All right. Mm, why is it important to check your they email every day? What is it important? Why is it important to check the email every day? Alma. It's I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Rosa. It's important to have contact with clients all the time. Very good, mm -hmm. very good. What do you think, Alma? You are muted. Thank you. Because it's important to have contact with clients. Okay, good. It is important to have contact with clients, all right? And why is it important to check your email every day, guys? Do you check your email every day? Yes. Yes, I do, right? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it is important to have, I mean, to check your email every day? In my case, in mm -hmm. my case, mm -hmm. this response is for me. <laughs> uh, okay, it's a responsibility. Okay, mm -hmm. responsibility. Mm -hmm. So, do you receive instructions through the email? Yes. Lo okay. que quería decir, teacher, era eh, que en mi caso, esta respuesta eh, es para mí, o sea, porque oh. yo lo he visto ah, por, para esto. <laughs> oh, okay, so this is true for you. This is true for true me. For me. Yes, because it's important because you get in contact with your clients through the email, right? All right, very good. What about you, Isabel? Uh, no, teacher. Yes, number two, but talking about your experience. Is it is important to have a contact with the our Data, data. With your? With they or? To get in contact with your boss? Mm -hmm. They see me. Oh, 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 you're reading this, okay, to have contact with yeah. them all the time. Uh -huh. Them okay. here, them refers to clients, okay? Este them se refiere a los clientes, them, ellos. Pero quiénes son ellos? Who are them? Ah, they are the clients, okay? Entonces, armando la respuesta, sería, it is important to have contact with clients. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh huh. All right, people. Is there any question so far? Is there any question so far? No question, too sure. No questions. Okay, then. Uh, we have some activities listed. I mean, posted on the platform. I will show you how to get there. Mm, on the platform, I posted uh, one discussion and one activity, if I'm not wrong. Allow me just to get there.
Okay, here we are. Here we are. We have these labels, okay? These menu buttons right here, okay? So in mine, it says discussion, but in yours, I think it says forum, forum. Look for that uh, label, okay? The label forum. You click on all the topics, todos los temas, you click on it, Y ahí tienen dos actividades ya posteadas. La primera actividad, the first activity, ustedes le dan clic en donde dice don't and doesn't. Y se trata de things you don't do in your job. Things you don't do in your job. Y las instrucciones dicen, right? Five sentences about things you don't do in your job. For example, I don't have breakfast at the office. And then write five more sentences about activities a co-worker doesn't do. For example, my boss doesn't answer calls before 8 a.m. Se movió hasta acá, pero es el formato de la plataforma que me lo movió. Ok, para completar esta oración es este 8 a.m. Esto no tiene nada que ver con del 1 al 5. Este del 1 al 5 es donde usted haría sus primeras 5 oraciones que son de cosas que usted no hace en el trabajo. Un ejemplo es, I don't have breakfast at the office. Ok, eh, I don't use the microwave, for example. All right. I don't sleep. I don't sleep in my job. Yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. I don't take a shower in my job, right? Um, veamos. Después de eso, son cinco oraciones más en las que ustedes van a usar el doesn't. Van a ser oraciones de actividades que sus compañeros o un compañero de ustedes o su jefe no hace, ¿ok? No es su responsabilidad hacer eso. Entonces, el ejemplo es, my boss doesn't answer calls before 8 a.m., 8 o'clock a.m. Entonces, el primer set es de ustedes y el segundo set de oraciones es de un compañero. Vamos a ver en la siguiente actividad que tenemos acá. What do you like or don't like doing in your free time? ¿Qué es lo que se le está pidiendo? Write 10 sentences about the leisure activities you like doing or don't like doing in your free time, ¿ok? Recordemos el cambio, ¿verdad? Recordemos el cambio. Por ejemplo, tenemos aquí, I like going to the beach on weekends. I don't like going shopping very often. Pueden ser actividades que les gustan y actividades que no les gustan, ¿ok? Entonces, son likes and dislikes. Acordémonos que con el verbo like, tenemos que poner a ing. A ver, un ejemplo. I like studying. Ah, no, porque es tiempo libre, ¿verdad? I like playing the flute. I, yeah, this is my activity. I like playing the flute. All right? I could say I don't what is like the riding a bike. I'm sorry? What is the flute? In flute. Switch? Flauta. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So, I don't like riding a bike, for example. All right. I don't like go surfing. Well, actually, I can't, right? But I don't like go surfing. Yeah. Uh, I don't like go shopping. Yeah, so you're going to write 10 activities. Uh, in it is a different teacher. It mm -hmm. is indifferent in, in, in like or don't like. It's indifferent, right? Yeah, it, it is, is indifferent. There is the 10 or, or more. <laughs> no, at least you complete the 10 sentences. It doesn't matter if you like doing that activity or you don't different. like. Mm -hmm. okay. So likes and dislikes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Y luego que ya han escrito su... Sus oraciones acá, acá pueden usar como listado también, ¿verdad? Aquí se puede usar como un listado, ¿sí? Por ejemplo, pongo acá y lo pongo como un listado, ¿sí? Y para ir numerándolos, ¿ya? 
Ay, psh, me los lleve todo. Ay. Like playing the flute. Bien. Y de ahí puedo seguir, ¿verdad? Que al 2 tengo que volver a poner acá el listado, ¿sí? Y este es para listado. Miren, con números. Luego listados con viñetas. Y aquí están todas las eh, funciones que ustedes Or pueden hacer. Text. Exactly. Uh -huh. y, les va a ir a, y les van a ir apareciendo acá. Acá no pueden eh, hacer nada. Miren, aquí no, no pasa nada. Aquí es el cuadro de texto en donde ustedes pueden realizar todos los cambios que quieran. ¿Ok? Luego que ya hayan terminado sus 10 oraciones, le dan enviar o submit. ¿Ok? Submit. ¿Mm? Estas no llevan nota como llevan la nota las tareas. Estas son apreciativas. ¿Ok? Apreciativa quiere decir que en una auditoría aparece que usted sí ha participado y... Eh, puede ser que si usted no ha participado en la discusión, ahí le va a aparecer no ha participado en discusiones, ¿verdad? Como una nota. Entonces, hay que participar para que, aparte de que en la auditoría aparezcamos que participamos, expandimos, ¿verdad? Expandimos el vocabulario. All right, people. Are we okay so far? Good. Eso lo hacen ustedes en su tiempo libre. Sí, en su tiempo libre ustedes ahí se ponen a jugar y a divertirse un poquito. Sí. What is the day limit to share for the right the, the photo? Actually, the, uh, there is one in unit one, so we have to do it as soon as possible. We had this situation with the platform, so it's extended. So at the end of this week, on Friday, it will be the limit for those. Mm -hmm. okay, teacher. Thanks, right. teacher. Mm -hmm. And, um, okay, I think we are okay. ¿Qué hemos aprendido el día de hoy? What did we study today? A ver. Uh, frequency adverbs. Frequency adverbs. Exactly. And what are the adverbs? Always, usually, mm -hmm. um, every, solemn, gradually, rarely, often, mm -hmm. never, normally, normally, sometimes, hardly ever. Mm -hmm. Hardly ever is the, the one, it's hardly ever. Hardly ever is one. Rarely is another one. Mm -hmm. Okay, teacher, thanks. Hardly okay. ever and rarely. Mm -hmm. So how do we use these frequent frequency adverbs? Let's read the sentence. Use. Use frequency. Use frequency adverbs. How frequency. Say how frequency and activity, activity happens. Okay, how frequently, right? How frequently. Mm -hmm. How frequently. Yes. And what are the adverbs again? Everybody, always. Always. Usually. Usually. usually normally. 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 Often. Often. often sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes. Occasionally. Occasionally. Seldom. Seldom. seldom Hardly ever, hardly ever, rarely, rarely, and never, never, never. Okay, now, how do we, I mean, what? where is the placement of this word in a sentence? We need to know that when we order a sentence, there is a logical order and a grammatic uh, a, I'm sorry, a grammatically ordered. Then we have subject, verb, complement, right? In the complement, there are a lot of parts, right? But the adverbs goes between, I will show you where we have to place it again, okay? I will show you this one, uh-huh. Just one second. 
the placement. Uh, all right, all right, Ronaldo, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we have the word order is right here. You see, between the subject and the verb, all right? Esa es la norma o la regla, ¿verdad? La regla dice que el adverbio de frecuencia va entre el sujeto y el verbo, between the subject and the verb. I always get up at five o'clock. He, y tenemos el adverbio antes del verbo, ¿verdad? He usually drives to work. Veamos en el siguiente. She, ¿qué sigue acá? ¿El verbo o el adverbio? Adverbio. El adverbio. Entonces no voy a decir she checks normally, ¿verdad? Vamos a decir she normally checks, ¿verdad? I often have breakfast at work. Miren dónde va en medio, ¿verdad? Del sujeto y el verbo. Subject, adverb, and verb. Este es la ubicación para los frequency adverbs, all right? For example, I have subject, adverb, verb, and the complement. Number one, I often go to the beach on weekends. Look, I often go to the beach on weekends. What happened with this one? Mm, it's not right after the subject. Well, actually, we can do that too. Podemos pasarlo al principio y le da un cierto énfasis, okay? Sometimes, ah, tiene un poquito de diferencia, ¿verdad? Entonces, sometimes my boss visits potential clients. ¿Qué tal si lo ponemos al, eh, perdón, si lo ponemos después de el verbo, eh, perdón, del sujeto, esta oración? Vamos a ir ahí para poder hacer la modificación. Si lo ponemos ahí, va a sonar un poco diferente y ustedes van a ver la diferencia del de significado en este caso. Yo puedo poner. ¿Sí? Porque la regla general, para no equivocarme, sería my boss sometimes, right? Visit potential clients. Visit potential clients. Uh -huh. Bien. Esto sería la regla general y así es correcto. Pero también diciéndolo al principio, solo que cambia un poquito por ahí, como una pequeña diferencia, como a veces, eh, o algunas veces, mi jefe visita clientes potenciales. ¿Qué tal si yo digo, mi jefe algunas veces visita eh, clientes potenciales? Cambio un Leve énfasis, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver. Number three, it says, my husband and I always have breakfast at home. El sujeto somos los dos, ¿verdad? My mm -hmm. husband and I. Después de esto, always. Antes del verbo, have, ¿verdad? Ok. Pero con el verbo be tenemos una diferencia, ¿ok? Con el verbo be, tengo que poner el verbo be antes del, del, eh, a ver, antes del adverbio. Déjenme llegar ahí. Si es. ¿Mm? Ajá, por ejemplo, I am always late for, digamos, lunch, ¿ok? I am always late for, for lunch. ¿Qué pasa aquí? Ah, en el verbo to be, espérenme que se me ha perdido. El, aquí está. En el verbo to be, no voy a cumplir esta regla, ¿sí? El verbo va a ir antes del adverbio, ¿sí? Es la única diferencia. De ahí todos los verbos que no sean be, el, ver, el adverbio va a ir antes, ¿ok? Correcto. Vamos a hacer unos ejercicios el día de mañana, ¿ok? Uh, someone, me. <laughs> I was doing this and the... <laughs> yeah. Y yo equivocando. ¿Quién era? ¿Quién era yo? It was me. 
Ok, voy a tomar la asistencia así, así, bien, quickly. Everybody, please say present when you hear your name and remember that uh, you have to turn your camera on. Alma Yamilet Hernández de Vázquez. Present teacher. Carlos Edgardo Vázquez Espino. Present teacher. Carlos Ernesto Galán Serrano. Débora Yamilet Campos Cortés. Fernando Enrique Martínez Macín. Fernando Noel Mauricio Cíntigo. Gabriela Eliseta Hernández Cruz. Present teacher. Helen Saray Hernández Larín. José Adonay Mendoza Aguillón. José Antonio Campos Rivas. Juan Carlos Gavidia Alfaro. María Isabel Rivas Guevara. Present teacher. Marta Alicia Rivera Sosa. Present teacher. Ronaldo Josué Guerrero Hernández. Rosa Estela Polanco García. Present teacher. Samuel Eduardo Araniva Galvez. Saúl Álvarez Pacheco. Present teacher. Stephanie Magalia Maya Reyes. Present teacher. Verónica Beatriz Celso de Saldaña. Ok, thank you very much, Samuel. Entonces, tenemos a Fernando Noel que se queda y have everybody a really good night. Teacher. Tell me, Fernando. Este, yo no tengo pregunta realmente para hacer ahora. No sé si otro compañero se quiere quedar para que aproveche. Bueno, está bien. Y hoy que teníamos pupusas de queso con loroco. Bueno, no hay problema, Fernando. It's ok. Hasta sí, semita sí. tenía yo de postre. Bueno, vamos a ver. Ya, ya me está convenciendo. <risa> a ver, ¿quién se quiere quedar el día de hoy en vez de Fernando? Y Fernando se queda en su día. Vamos a ver. ¿Alguien quiere quedarse? Solo uno. Solo uno. Ay, ya me trabaron el Zoom. Disculpen, <risa> pero... <risa> A ver, jóvenes, vamos a ver, jóvenes. Ya los veo que todo va. Can you? All right. Very good, Saul. Then have a very good night, everybody, and see you tomorrow. All right? Do see your you homework and submit. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Bye. See you. Bye bye, Alma. Hey. Okay, here we are, Saul. Is there anything okay. I can help you with? Yes, teacher, I can help me, please. For example, I I don't remember. <laughs> And I, I have, I have, yes, it is pronunciation. I have, yes, have. Mm -hmm. I have a little throat, throat, throat. Trouble, yes, trouble, trouble, poco, poco, uh, trouble. Uh, the, the topic, the topic, for example, and how many and how much. I remember that it is the use, how many. In the the countable is correctly. Yes, it and is. How much it is an incountable, but at a usual in the money in the time is correctly. Exactly. How much? Mm -hmm. How much? How much? Yes. And, and for example, I confused the different sentences that talk about the money. For example. And how mm -hmm. much, uh, how much uh, money you save in the year, for example, is correctly. Mm -hmm. How much money do you save save in the in the year of of no, it's of the year. What is that? Uh, no, 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 no. In a year. In a year. In a year. Uh -huh. in, 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 in a, a year. year. O puede decir también yearly. Yearly. Year. You can say okay. yearly. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yes. I, I, but I say the usual, the, for example, cantidad de dinero, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, eh, 
for example, I, uh, uh, for, for example, yo le pregunto, how much, how much t-shirt do you, o oh, oh, cómo poder preguntarle cuánto tiempo se tardaría en recoger, por ejemplo, cuánto tiempo se tardaría en ahorrar 100 dólares. Ya es algo ah. específico. Siempre utilizamos how much or ya es the difference, for example. Ajá. Siempre es how much time. Pero más adelante usted va a descubrir que how much time se puede sustituir por how long para hacer esa pregunta que usted me está diciendo. Oh, Porque no. esa uh -huh. pregunta ya es... Esa pregunta ya es como realmente más específica, ¿verdad? How uh -huh. much time es como la forma básica de decir cuánto tiempo, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Pero digamos que usamos how much time, ¿ok? How much time, lo voy a poner acá, voy a compartir la, 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 okay, la pizarra, ¿ok? I uh, will share the board. Uh -huh. Y siempre acordémonos que usamos how much para preguntas, nada más. Okay? So, when we ask questions, so how much time uh -huh, does it take? Okay, how much time uh -huh. does it take? Right? How much time does it take you? Mm -hmm. To save, uh, what what was the amount? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. All right. Ten. Ten thousand dollars. But well, actually, we said dollars already. Okay. Ten thousand. Well, they see that. Ten. All right. Ten and there thousand. we are. Mm hmm. There we are. Aquí ya tenemos que componerla, ¿verdad? Componer uh -huh. la, eh, la pregunta. So, how much time sería nuestra frase de pregunta? Our question uh -huh. phrase. Uh -huh. How much time? Luego el auxiliary. Uh -huh. Porque como el, estamos preguntando por el tiempo. El tiempo, el tiempo. es it. Uh -huh. Does it take? Pero ¿a quién? A usted, a mí, a él. Entonces uh -huh. aquí pongo, does it take you? Does it take you? Y luego el infinitivo porque es como el, la acción complementaria, ¿verdad? Porque uh -huh. la primera acción es cuánto le toma, ¿sí? Uh -huh. Cuánto le lleva. Uh -huh. Pero la segunda acción de esta oración es to say, verb to. Este es el segundo verbo en la oración. Entonces, en el segundo verbo, yo tengo que ver si es un propósito, si va hacia una dirección, si necesita el to o el a ing. En este caso, uh -huh. en este caso, así, you to save, porque es como un objetivo, ¿sí? Podríamos decirlo de esa manera, por eso usamos un infinitivo. Los infinitivos son se usan para propósitos, ¿ok? Para objetivos. Ok. Entonces, how much time does it take you to save $10,000? Así uh -huh. sería la pregunta ya eh, elaborada, ¿verdad? Y luego eh, me preguntaba, how much money do you save in a year? ¿Ok? Uh -huh. How much money do you say do you do you do you do you save in a year? All right. Of course, you can say okay. this. Mm -hmm. Ahora eh, me decía de how many, verdad? Que estaba con uh -huh. la de how many. Mm -hmm. How many is for countable things? Uh, usually, they are tangible. Usualmente con how many tenemos las cosas tangibles, o sea, o sea uh -huh. que existen, ¿verdad? Eh, no son cosas abstractas. Usually the abstract um, situations, concepts, or whatever thing it is, sería con how much, usualmente, uh -huh. usually. Pero countable sería el cuantificador para eso. Por ejemplo, how many, decíamos, dollars. Okay, how many dollars mm -hmm. uh, do you save? Okay. 
Okay. Or mm -hmm. how many times do you save in a year, right? In a year. Si hablo de la moneda de 10 centavos, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. ¿Cuántas monedas de 10 centavos ahorras? O cuántos uh, dólares ahorras. Ahorras. Uh -huh. eh, uh -huh. Ahí sí, porque estoy contando los objetos. The objects. Uh -huh. All right. The objects. Por ejemplo, um, the, the different in, in how much and how many. Por ejemplo, the how, how much. Uh, time does it take you to save ten thousand mm dollars? -hmm. And how many how many dollars oh oh, oh sure, uh, tell me uh, um quiero utilizar la, la misma eh, pero decirle como cuántos billetes por ejemplo por cuántos billetes de veinte ah, son okay. $10, mil dólares para utilizar el, la diferencia entre how much and how many. Ahí sí sería diferente, ¿verdad? Exactly. How many 20 bills. 20, 20 bills. Ajá. Uh -huh. 20, yeah. 20 bills. Uh -huh. mm. 20 dollar bills. 20 dollar bills. 20 dollar bills. Mm. Okay. How okay. many 20 dollar bills do you save? Right. Uh -huh. Okay, that's correct. Mm -hmm. I, I understand in, in the, the different in how much, for example, is reference to the money or dollars. It is the, the mo how much is usually used, for example, it is the, the, the money, but no specific. For example, how many is the money in, his, in this case is, is dollars and, or Moneda, how do you say money in English? A currency. In cor or currency, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Entonces, entiendo que, y ahora lo digo en español, a ver si así es. Mm -hmm. <laughs> que la diferencia, mm -hmm. por ejemplo, how much lo puedo utilizar, claro, para mencionar el tema de dinero, pero en general y específicamente el how many, por ejemplo, 20 dólares, 10 dólares o las monedas, ¿verdad? diferentes monedas. Ok, ahora si lo hablamos en conceptos, de los uh -huh. nombres, ok, porque aquí estamos hablando que contamos eh, o usamos el how much y el how many con dependiendo de los nouns. Uh -huh. Los nouns. Uh -huh. Y los nouns, usted los puede encontrar como count nouns uh -huh. y como non-count nouns. Uh -huh. Entonces, mm -hmm. en este caso, un non-count noun es money. Okay? Mm -hmm. Un non-count noun es time. All right? mm -hmm. Otro non-count noun puede ser sand. Like puede mm -hmm. ser water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Puede ser um, eh, Play-Doh. <laughs> okay? It's not countable, right? So, play Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, teacher. I, I, but I, 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 I confuse, for example, is the usually, specifically, much and many for the money. And I, under, I, I understand. Oh, oh, no, oh, 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 okay. Porque ahí me confundía. ¿Por qué utilizamos like en los casos how many money uh, and uh, por qué utilizábamos how much money y cuando hacíamos algo referente o específico, utilizamos el many. Para, pero hoy sí ya la entiendo que es el tema de las cosas contables, ¿verdad? Lo, lo que es tangible. Por ejemplo, sí puedo ver 20 dólares, un dólar, 5 dólares. Ajá. Pero no puedo decir tengo 5 dinero. Exactamente. Ajá. You don't have one money, two money, three money. Mm -mm, sí. We can't say. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing that makes a confusion here or mixed everything. Yesterday it was many and money, the pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Pronunciation many, because uh -huh, you say you say many, mm -hmm. many, right? Many. And money, right? Money. Uh -huh. money. Many and money. Money. Mm -hmm. many, many, money. Mm -hmm. 
many, many money. money. Entonces, uh -huh. aquí, si yo digo, how, <ríe> digamos, how many, eh, y si yo lo pronuncio, how many, no, no, no entra, ¿ok? Uh -huh. Ajá, no entra. <ríe> y how ayer, many. ajá, es que ayer teníamos la confusión de las dos frases, no sé si se recuerda. Ajá, sí. teníamos la confusión porque como la teníamos que subrayar, ¿verdad? Sí, teacher, así es. Entonces oh, ahí no. por la pronunciación se sentía extraño, ¿verdad? Se sentía uh -huh. como confuso. Entonces por acá teníamos eso, así. Aquí, ¿verdad? Sí, ahí. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Aquí tenemos, oh, uh, decía, okay. creo que Débora fue, ¿verdad? Cuando pronunció, pronunció este como que fuera el dinero. Sí. O acá, how oh, much money, <risa> how much money <risa> do they pay per hour? Pero no puede ser así, ¿verdad? O mm. es much o es many. Entonces, many. por ahí venía también la confusión de la pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Sí, yeah. sí. Ajá. Ok, teacher, thanks. Sí, es, es the different topic, for example. I remember that, for example, in your the, the class, but I confused the different topic, for example, the, the times or the verbs. The present, continuo, the past. The, por ejemplo, yo me recuerdo y quizás en mi cabeza, por lo mismo que estoy recordándolo de nuevo, a veces cuando estamos viendo el presente simple, yo tal vez, por ejemplo, con el agregado del, del apóstol, y en the heaven, de la ING, de la acción, o a veces en pasado. Entonces, creo que eso es lo que más me ha dificultado en, en, en todo esto del, del, del lenguaje, ¿verdad? Del idioma, y hoy lo estoy recordando, y estoy recordando, y sí, de verdad le digo, la estructura. Con usted hoy estoy recordando la estructura, por ejemplo, claro, yo sé que para decir, por ejemplo, una oración o una acción, tengo que utilizar el verbo, tengo que utilizar el sujeto y el complemento, pero ya no recordaba la estructura, justamente lo que estamos viendo con usted hoy, ¿verdad? Y eso creo que es un, para mí, para mí que ya tengo el conocimiento por ahí guardado en, en mi cabeza y hoy que vuelvo a ver la estructura, recuerdo, ah, con razón no puedo pronunciar esto porque esto va primero o, por ejemplo, la, la, utilizar lo de las terceras personas. Entonces, por ahí estoy recordando y a veces por eso es que usted siente que le digo cosas que no, pero ese, en este caso no, ¿verdad? Pero ajá, sí, dicho, le, agra ajá. le agradezco, pero I, I remember that the difference uh, rules and structure grammatic, por ejemplo, grammatic, But I grammar, say grammar. Mm -hmm. grammar. Mm -hmm. I, I remember the difference vocabulary, but I don't grammar. I don't, I don't remember grammar. What is uh, the okay. specific grammar? Yeah, grammar. <laughs> I think grammar is the most difficult part, maybe. I mean, trying to remember all the rules and exceptions and when it goes and when it doesn't take something uh, that's kind of confusing sometimes because we have a rule and we have exceptions so we need to be aware about the exceptions and uh, that is why grammar becomes difficult it's important it's important but I think this course is to communicate and it's easier like to compound the words Maybe we don't know why this go right in this place in the sentence, but it sounds better. And it seems like it has, I mean, it makes sense, right? Yes, so yes, try, yes. try to learn the complete uh, expression, okay? The complete expression. Okay. This is why, this is why on the manual, you will find expressions. If you see expressions, right? Expressions. Uh, here, look, you can learn the expressions, the complete mm -hmm. uh, words, I mean, the complete sentence or question. In this case, we are talking about some questions, how to ask about money. And then mm -hmm. you have to learn the complete expression, all right? The complete expression. Then now you know. Now you know how to ask about the amount of salary you are going to get, mm -hmm. about the price of something, uh, maybe the um, monthly salary or the amount that you have to pay for something. Right? Maybe not the price. Maybe an installment. Right? Installment, mm -hmm. una cuota, right? Mm -hmm. uh, una mensualidad. So the price is how much is it? How much are they if it is plural? So remember these like expressions, okay? 
expression and it will be easier it will make the learning easier all right if you concentrate or focus on grammar maybe it's going to be slower all right slower but if you try to learn how to communicate the idea that will be mm -hmm. faster all right that will be faster so that's my tip for you because you have a uh, the knowledge what you have to do is just to put in order words to express an idea all right so don't go back to the beginner you are in a different level so push yourself up okay, all right teacher. thanks thanks teacher okay there you go <laughs> but you're doing a good job you are doing a very great job and i like when you participate and you enrich the um, with your opinions with your questions so please continue that way all right Okay, teacher, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, so have a very good night and see you tomorrow. Thanks, teacher. See you tomorrow. Have a good night. You. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.